Tonight, I would like to talk about one person who has influenced me. And I'd be really curious to see if any of you have ever heard about this lady. She passed away in the 70s. So I'm not saying that she was like centuries ago. Okay, ready? Put up your hand if you've ever heard. Now, just be honest. We're honest at Tehila, right? Put up your hand if you've ever heard of Catherine Coleman. Woo! One, two, three. No, 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 there's a few more. There's a few more. <laughs> I know. After, okay, now put up your hand if you've ever heard the name Catherine Coleman. Oh, come on, I just said it. Yeah, gotcha, I gotcha. Okay. So I gotcha, I got you. So after tonight, everybody in here, next time you're somewhere and they say, have you ever heard of Catherine Kuhlman? You can say, yes, I have. Let's go. Yes. Okay, so here is Catherine Kuhlman. Oh my gosh. I just love that lady. I never met her. I was a teenager when she passed away. So as they're all trying to figure out how old I am. Uh, <laughs> So, Catherine Kuhlman, okay, where do I start with this lady? First of all, cool dress, eh? Yeah, cool dress. That part didn't influence me, but it is cool. So, I'll tell you about this lady. She, when she was a young teenager, oh, first of all, she, she grew up in a pretty normal home. Everything was pretty regular. She had three siblings, and... Um, when she was a teenager, they don't really know exactly what age or what. I couldn't really figure it out when I was reading about her. But she had a real experience with the Lord. Now, when I was a teenager, I, I didn't even know there was a God. But when I finally found God, or God found me, I uh, was reading about Catherine Kuhlman, and her experience was so similar to the experience that I had Oh, I thought, this is really cool. I need to know more about this lady. So she had this really cool experience. And people here, young people, you're having a cool experience with the Lord when you come to Tehillah. Don't lose it. Hang on to it. Hold it in your heart. Guard it. Because it's for you, a gift for you that nobody can take away from you. Nobody. Nobody. So she had this experience, and then she went through school. And even in school, when she was in high school, they, they were giving her some award. It wasn't even that meaningful of an award. I can't remember what it was for now, but they were giving her an award. And she got up to, to accept the award, and she started preaching wow. to her high school. Dressed like that. No, 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 no. I don't know about that part. And... And people were getting saved. People were getting healed. They, and so then when school was over, she decided that she was going to go and uh, be um, a traveling evangelist, tra traveling minister. Okay, remember now, she was born like a long time ago when women didn't go and become traveling ministers. She did. And when she would preach, wherever she would go, they say hundreds of thousands of people were healed under her ministry. Powerful healing ministry. They, they call her one of the women that really started the name of faith healer. I don't know if you've heard that word. It's kind of an old word, but it still means the same today. Like just this person who had so much faith to see people healed. People would come from all over the place to be healed, to be underneath that anointing, Jesus Christ would heal them. That's amazing. So here's a lady that really was constantly being judged. After she started traveling around uh, the states, mostly, mostly the states, it didn't take too long until a fellow fell in love with her. And his, his nickname, she always called, I don't even know his real name because they just always called him Mr. That was his name, Mr. Okay, so Mr. fell in love with her. He wooed her, courted her. And um, guess what? Mr. was married and had two kids. 
However, Mr. left his wife, divorced her, left the kids, and went to be with Catherine Kuhlman. And she married him. Scandalous. Okay, let me just start by, well, let's just go down the list. Okay, what a saint. So, this hero of mine, <laughs> she dressed like that. <laughs> okay, people criticized her for that because this stuff, this, oh, <laughs> dressed like that. People criticized her for that because those gowns cost so much money and they had this idea that preachers were supposed to be poor. Okay, so that's one thing. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> In Jesus' name. She, it's scandalous because she was a woman in ministry. Whoa. So glad that part's over. It's scandalous that she married a divorced man who divorced his wife to marry her, and she said yes. We've got a lot of scandals going on here, right? As a high school student, she preached... And that wasn't cool. It's, it's hardly cool now, much less back then. And uh, this was a woman who got judged a lot. And I think that if I had been in her high school, I would have been one that was judging her. But she kept going. Okay, it's a little bit more into the scandal. So she's married for, I think it was almost 10 years. Bad marriage. She couldn't get over the fact. Guilt, guilt weighed her down. Guilt and shame. So she divorced Mr. Broke his heart. And uh, the Lord kept using her in powerful, mighty, anointed ways. She continued to walk in the giftings. She knew in her heart that the Lord had called her. Did she make mistakes? Oh, yeah. Were there scandals? Oh, yeah. Was she judged? Highly judged. But she did not stop doing the things that God put on her heart. Thousands of people were healed. Hundreds of thousands of people healed, set free, brought into the kingdom of God. Okay, there's still some more to the scandal. I know. This keeps going. This just keeps going. So... Her ministry, it, um, it continued on. And then it didn't take too long. And she was starting to bring in some finances. And uh, didn't take too long until people started to attack her that she was uh, embezzling money from the organization. Now, they never proved that she did. But the scandals continued and, like, come on. This woman would stand up, preach a message, and the anointing of God would fall in the room. Was she perfect? No. Was she judged? Yes. As she can, may we have slide two, please? As she continued, thank you so much. Look at that. Isn't that just so cool? That is so cool. Okay, you might wonder what the heck is that, right? It's a, fl it's a flash bulb. <laughs> Do you guys know what flash bulbs are? Okay, <laughs> I digress. Okay, this is part of what, another cool thing about her ministry, and this was something that really clicked with my heart because I always thought that I was like one of the strangest, weirdest people in the world because I would see lights on people and there would be sometimes uh, an aura of light around and um and look at that that is they even said when she passed away that the room was filled with light people who even doubted her people who judged her people who thought that she was too scandalous to be a preacher could not deny that miracles like that light following her touching people the room exploding in light like Jesus, we need you. 
We need you to come and kiss this generation and show them that miracles happen. People are healed. People are set free. The stone is rolled away. The sicknesses are gone. The healing comes back. We need this. We need that it's not just a picture where you might say, oh, it looks like it was just a flash. No, this is the presence of the living God. And you know, the word of God says that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, Amen. dwells in me. Like, wow. Now, if that's not mind-blowing, it's amazing. Oh, Jesus, we just love you. We just need you, Heavenly Father, so much. So even in spite of all of the scandals, in spite of people that can see the healings and see the touch of the Holy Spirit. She was still judged, but she pushed through, and she pushed through, and she pushed through. And this is why, this is why I call her a hero of the faith. This is why I call her somebody who has influenced me, because this woman of God did not stop. And I'm here to say today that I know that there are people out here that are that are right here, right now, today, and you've been judged. You've been told that you're weird. You've been told that the faith is wrong. Your dreams have been snatched away. They've tried to take the judgment, that spirit of darkness, that judgment has tried to take from you the dreams, the ideas, the thoughts that God's put in your heart. And I'm here to tell you today that there is no one on the face of this earth that can carry out the dream, can carry out the assignment, can carry out those things that God has put on your heart. No one can do it but you. We need you. We need you to stand up and say, I, I don't care if I'm judged, I'm still going to do the things that God has put on my heart. I, I want to just, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Call to the spirit man in you right now. And I want to say, rise up to your calling. Rise up to the things that God has put on your heart. Those dreams, rise up to them. Grab hold of them. You might think they're small. Let me tell you about a dream that I had once. I once had a dream that I wanted to write a book or some books. Okay, well, I've now written seven. And um, one of them, thank you. Thank you so much. One of them received um, a national award, and it is now in four languages. It's teeny tiny weeny little book. There's hardly anything to it. But the anointing of God is on that book. 5,000 of those books got into the hands of our small little Ukrainian children. It was, uh, it was translated into Ukraine, into, the, into Ukrainian, so that the Ukrainian children could have a book on faith and love and trust and fear and embracing that they are who they should be, 5,000. Now, all I'm trying to say is there's no boasting to that. I will boast of Jesus, but I will tell you that the Lord put that in my heart. Go for it. And if one, one of those little children whose homes were destroyed, if one of them felt comfort, felt the arms of the Lord around it, which I believe much more did, if one, that's worth it. That's worth it. Call your dreams to life tonight. Call them out. Put your hand on your heart for me. Come on, do this for me. You don't have to say this out loud, but say it in, say it in your heart. Heart, are you willing? Heart, are you willing? Be willing. God needs, he loves, he's anointed, he wants, he's calling, he's drawing you. Be like Catherine Coleman and don't give up. If you want to wear her dresses like that too, that's fine. But don't give up. Don't let the judgments of other people throw away 
a kiss from God. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Each one of you has been called and anointed for this time right now. There's no mistake. You are not a mistake. Your idea is not crazy. It's not too small. It's not too big. Today is a day to fly. Today is a day to say, yes, I am willing. You know, um, I was saying how the Lord is, sometimes he puts, I, I see these just lights around people. It's just one way he talks to me. So today I saw a young man, by, I asked somebody by the name of Moses. Moses has glasses on. Are you somewhere? But it was a different Moses. But you, I do want to publicly say, because I told you already today, you are a warrior in Christ. And I bless that in you in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless that in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Is there another Moses with glasses and a gray shirt? No. Okay. You'll have to come find me later because God has a word for you. No, I'm not missing him. He's not in the potty or something. <laughs> Grandmas are allowed to say that. Okay, another person the Lord just really highlighted today is Danae. Is she here? Yeah, put up. Yes, beautiful, beautiful Danae. You know what? I just want to bless the dreams in you. You know, you are small in stature. You are gentle, you are kind, but there are mighty dreams in you. And Danae, in the mighty name of Jesus, I say, rise up and be a giant for the Lord. Speak his name, put a megaphone to your mouth, and call out people to come to Christ in Jesus' name. Is that okay? Then I bless you today in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you so much. And there are, there are other people here. Okay, you're otherwise a dream stealer or a dream cheerleader. Who are you going to be tonight? You're going to steal people's dreams, judge them, poke fun at them, tell them they're not able, they're not capable? Or are you going to be their cheerleader tonight? Cheer them on. Maybe it sounds weird. Maybe you, you don't understand what it is that they're putting their hands to. Maybe, maybe you don't even like the person. But does that mean that you should steal their dreams? But guess who steals the dreams the most? You. Your own dreams. Because you don't believe enough that God loves you. God's called you. God has brought you into this time right here, right now, and he calls you his friend. He calls you his child. His eye is always on you, not out of shame. He loves you so much. And when you can grab the seed of that in your heart, we are going to have so many more Catherine Coleman's that are going to rise up and say, in spite of scandals, in spite of judgment, I'm going to lay my hands on the sick and see them recover. I'm going to speak into the four corners of this earth and draw people into the kingdom of God. You can do that. You can do that. You know why? Because the Bible says so. The Bible says you have the mind of Christ. The Bible says he will never leave you. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So if the Catherine Coleman's of the world can see hundreds of thousands of people healed, so can you. So can the next generation. We need you to be you. We need you. There's not one person in this room that is not needed. We need you to fill in those gaps. Because God has put dreams and hopes and desires on your heart. And I just stand here today as a woman of God and say, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, I bless your dreams. We call it forth today. 
I say, rise up, dreams. Rise up now and bubble out of these people. We call those dreams from the north and the south and the east and the west, and we say, dreams, rise up again. It's time to revisit the dreams. It's time to revisit yourself and know that you are just perfect the way you are. There's a, a third slide that I'd just like you to see. So this is awesome. Isn't this awesome? You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be beautiful. You don't have to be a great, talented athlete, a brain in school. I guess I should say academic brain. You don't have to be, you can be a nerd. You don't have to be one of the best singers or musicians. You just have to be willing. And I know you're willing. Because today you put your hand on your heart and you asked, and guess who lives in your heart? And guess who says yes? So for each one of you, I know you are willing to be that vessel that God has asked you to be. Allow yourself to dream. Allow yourself to dream again. You know, I um, would love to have an opportunity to be able to to just pray with you, to just see you gather together and bless each other's dreams, to where you've been judged, where people have judged you, that, that today let it just fall to the ground and stay right here at Tehillah and it can get vacuumed up when the cleaners come. Don't take the judgments home anymore. Don't, don't allow those weak heartedness people to destroy the kingdom of God ideas in you. Leave it behind today. And we're going to pray with you. Pastor James is going to come up and, and we're going to pray and we're going to just hang in there with you to see all those judgments fall off of your shoulders and you can rise up to be that that you were called to be and be set free. Is that okay with you? Are you cool with this? Yeah. You know what? There's people here, and you still don't quite believe it, but that's okay. By the end of the night, you will. And there's people here, that really, really, really important people have snatched your dreams away. Really, really important people, and that hurts. And I'm here to acknowledge it does hurt. But don't take it home with you tonight, okay? Leave it here. Leave the judgments here, because... There's somebody who believes in you that's even more important, and that's the King of Kings that overrides any of that other pain. So, Pastor James. <laughs> I, I don't quite understand this one. <laughs> Are we switching off? Do you want me up here? Is that what you wanted? Come on, stay up here for a moment. I think this is the mystery of God that God chooses to use imperfect people. If you go down the list of the people in the scriptures, the amount of mistakes, failures, sins that they made, yet God still chose to use them. I mean, just imagine being Peter. Imagine, talk about a scandal. 12 year old girl scares Peter out of even being willing to admit he knows Jesus. And then 50 days later, what does Peter end up doing? He ends up being the rock that Jesus prophesied that the church began, and he preached the first sermon that began the church. And there's been, man, you want to talk about an argument in the church? Man, the amount of people that I have argued with on the topic of restoration. Now, here's what Carolyn is not saying. She's not saying, oh yeah, go and do a bunch of sins and da 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 and God will still use you. No, 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 no. But the amount of arguments we've had in Bible college with other pastors of leaders that fall, that are, oh, they're disqualified for life. God can't use them anymore. I just think the Bible would be speaking contrary to that. 
And I think that's been one of the most powerful things in my life, the realities in my life, because if you knew me in high school, whoo, you would not expect me to be here right now. And even still, I'm in my 30s now, and I still, I still sometimes feel an attack of the enemy trying to remind me of who I used to be, of what I once was. And even now as a pastor, I'll be the first to admit, I am not perfect. Surprise, you, none of your pastors are perfect, FYI. Maybe you thought they were, but they're not, trust me. Trust me, not perfect. But neither are you. Neither were any of the people in the scriptures. Abraham, <laughs> the whole father of this whole thing. Who what did he do? He pimped his wife out. I'll go down the list, David. He was the king and God knew that he was gonna sleep with Bathsheba, yet he still called him a man after his own heart. Go to New Testament. Paul, he was a murderer. Peter, he was, he denied Jesus. And this is, this is the mystery of God is that God chooses imperfect people despite what they've done or maybe even what they will do. Because God doesn't demand perfection. He demands a willing heart. I love that line. A willing heart. And of course, we grow in character. We grow in likeness to Jesus. We grow in following in his ways and his, his love. But if we're ever trying to achieve perfection, if we ever say, God, you can't use me until I'm perfect, well, then he's never gonna use you because you're never gonna be perfect, ever ever. And I think what Carolyn is tapping into tonight is that God has called all of you. And sometimes I'll be the first to admit, I disqualify myself from what I think God or can, can or cannot use me in. And yet time after time, he continues to surprise me that, no, James, I have called you. And it's the same for you. It's the same for you. It's the same for all of us. And I love that she could have easily just shared the story about all the miracles, but she shared the story of a real person. And that's us. What I want to invite Carolyn to do now, if you want to stand. What I want to invite Carolyn to pray over us is a breaking of the lies, of the identity of the things that we once did that try to hold us back. I love that story of Jesus on the beach with Peter soon after he denied him. What did Jesus do? It was early in the morning Peter was around a fire and Jesus is walking and he brings him something to eat. What, what Jesus does in this moment, if you see the correlation between the moment Jesus, Peter denied Jesus to the moment, this was the moment Jesus restored Peter. So in the same setting, early in the morning around a fire, he came and asked him, hi Caleb, Peter, do you love me? You know the story maybe, if you don't. Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Then feed my lambs. For every time that Peter denied Jesus, Jesus declared something greater over him. And this is what I feel like the Lord wants to do tonight over us, is the things, the failures, the mistakes, the sins, the blatant sins, the decisions we make to ignore God sometimes, like Peter did in that moment. God can restore you from that. And those dreams can be awakened. And those dreams can come to fruition. And all the enemy would want to do is to keep you in that place of thinking that you're not enough. And the truth is we're not, but in Christ, we are made enough. There's this old saying, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. There's another saying, God's not looking for your ability, but your availability. This is the message of the heart of tonight. 
So Carolyn, if you wanna pray for us, and even if you wanna just, I don't know, come to the front, whatever you wanna do, close your eyes. I feel like some of the lies, the sins, the failures, the past mistakes, God is breaking off the power that they've had over you tonight.